Honorable Chairperson, Moderators and Discussant, and the August Gathering. Assalamu alaikum. First of all, my uh, gratitude to the organizers for giving me a chance to have a lecture in this uh, B BSCI scientific conference. So I'm Dr. Taufik Shariar Haq from National Heart Foundation. I would like to uh, talk on this topic on device therapy in congenital heart disease. So first of all, I would like to start with the facts that we are a country of 160 million people with more than 1,200 people living per square kilometer. We are the most densely populated country in the world. Uh, but on the other hand, health expenditure as share of GDP is only 2.4% in our country. Our crude, crude uh, birth rate is 17 per 1,000 people. And as we have said, our GDP expenditure on health services is very low. More than 74% of our health-related expenditures are out-of-pocket expenditure. Uh, if we consider our infant and neonatal mortality, our Neonatal mortality is around 20 per 1,000 live births, and infant mortality is 25 per 1,000 live births. And if you look at the causes of these mortalities, you can see in the neonatal group, 12% death is due to congenital heart disease, and 1% of them are thought to be of cardiac origin. And then what is the prevalence or incidence prevalence of congenital heart disease in our country? In a study conducted in 2008 by uh, Professor Nurnar Fatima, she showed in a single center it was 25 per 1,000 live births and associated other somatic anomaly, anomalies like Down syndrome was 18% and commonest diseases were ASD, VSD, PDA and Tetralogy of Fellow. A very recent, recent study uh, done by Dr. Shantosh Kumar in a single upazila he showed that incidence of pre prevalence of uh, congenital heart disease were 10% in uh, general population. So the burden of disease is not very small. But are we prepared? There are now almost more than 100 cath labs in all over Bangladesh, and only six centers are providing a complete care for the patients with congenital heart disease with dedicated pediatric cardiology and pediatric surgery teams. At this point, I would like to highlight a few points from our institution, our surgery unit. We have a very strong cardiac, pediatric cardiac surgery unit. And uh, last year, they performed more than 750 surgeries, and 38% of them were infants. And all sorts of surgeries are done with a good outcome, only 6.4% mortality. And we can see that complex cases were more than 48% in their, in their study. And there were 29 cases of arterial switch operation they performed last year. So I won't hesitate to say that in our center, we started pediatric cardiology program to support our pediatric surgery team. Besides doing cardiac cath and valvoplasties and uh, atrial septostomies and PDS stentings, we also started doing uh, device closure for congenital heart disease from 2015. In, actually, in 2014, we did a series of uh, workshops with, uh, in collaboration with Madras Medical Mission. And from 2015, we are doing a device closure for congenital heart disease, which actually takes out a large group of patients from our OT schedule and allows them to concentrate more on complex cases. Till today, we have done more than 1,700 cases of device closure for congenital heart disease. Uh, if we go by the diagnosis, 60% cases are atrial septal defect, 35% are PDA, and the rest are uh, ventricular septal defects. When we select patients for um, ASD closer, actually we take patients who are more than two years of age or at least 15 kg in weight. A transthoracic echo is the key to a good, inter good congenital uh, intervention. And uh, in the pre COVID era, up to 2019, almost 90% of our ASD patients, adult ASD patients, underwent transesophageal echo. But during COVID, uh, we actually shifted from our uh, protocol, and now we have become quite courageous, and we are doing all of the ASDs with only 10% of them undergoing transesophageal echocardiography. Uh, we actually select patients with five millimeter rims all around. Definitely, aortic rim is deficient in our population. 
We used to take, uh, it's, it is said that 34 millimeter de uh, defects are very uh, safe for, uh, for closer, but actually with availability of larger devices, larger uh, edges can now be closed. We de prefer a single defect. And uh, you can see our patients, most of our patients are above the age of 20 years, which actually indicates to our failure, failure of our system to uh, get these patients at an, congenital heart disease at a younger age. Uh, so just to share a few cases, right upper pulmonary vein uh, approach is our favorite, uh, preferred and favorite approach. We have done cases through all of these, a case uh, uh, done through uh, uh, mitral valve approach. Sorry, it took a too, too much of a long time. Uh, okay, so this is a 70-year-old male with 36, uh, 34 millimeter ASD, we close with a 38 millimeter device. But when we have uh, larger ASDs with small reams, we can always take help of a balloon. This is a case done by a balloon assisted, uh, balloon supported deployment. Takes a long time and uh, quite cumbersome. So device is deployed and balloon is deflated. And regarding VSDs, transcatheter closure of uh, perimembranous and muscular VSDs is possible. It is a good alternative in residual VSDs after surgery. VSDs that are poorly accessible for surgical closure. Muscular VSDs are located centrally in the interventricular septum. In perimembranous VSD, there are chances of uh, AV block entrapment of tri um, tricuspid uh, valve tissue causing the large shear. These things have to be uh, kept in mind. So we have done 94 cases of ventricular, de uh, ventricular septal defect. This is a post-surgical uh, ventricular defect closer. We did it with uh, ADO2, a small defect, which was device was de deployed uh, through aortic anterior approach and uh, checked and released. We have closed uh, ASDs with uh, duct occluded 2, which is a simple procedure. You just go through the aorta, cross, the, cross into the um, left ventricle, cross through the ASD, uh, VSD into the right ventricle and deploy a device. So it takes less time and we always prefer this device. But using the duct, oc duct occluder 1, you have to have an AV loop. Most of the cases you have to have an AV loop, so you go anterior take out the wire through a retrograde approach and deploy a device from the uh, ventricle, from the venous side. So you need to snare down your uh, wire from the uh, right heart of the right heart of the right heart. So this was actually uh, a dextrocardia patient. We closed it with the ADU2, it was a seven millimeter device. The device was deployed, it was checked. and released. So regarding PDAs, almost with availability of different types of disease, uh, devices, uh, ADO1, ADO2, vascular plugs, um, muscular VSD device, most of the PDAs which are not irreversibly hypertensive can now be closed. So this is our data with 655 cases. We usually do our uh, PDAs to single venous puncture uh, in integrate approach. But in some patients, adult patients or obese patients, it is, this becomes difficult and we have done some cases, uh, retrograde approach as well. Here again, you have to form an AV loop, snare down your wire and deploy a device from the ventricular side. So uh, this is a case of 19 year old girl, uh, 17 millimeter PDA, pulmonary artery pressure initially was 90 by 50 and systemic pressure was 160 by 40. And uh, we actually, did a balloon occlusion. We occluded the PDA with a 21 millimeter balloon and the PA pulmonary pressure came down, down to 50 by 20 and systemic pressure was 150 by uh, 70. And then we took a large uh, post-MI uh, muscular VSD device, 21 millimeter, and closed, closed the defect. So no no, none of the procedures uh, we do are without complications. So we had a one-month follow-up of 96% of the patients. Uh, 
and um, uh, six months follow-up of 82 percent patients. We failed to deploy AG device in 11 cases. We embolized four devices, one procedural death during LED intervention in a patient with ASD. Uh, uh, we did multiple procedures in uh, eight cases. Uh, so the burden of congenital heart disease is not very less in our country. Every year, almost 30,000 patients are included in this pool. Are we really prepared? So the number of centers are really less. There is lack of trained manpower. Mostly we suffer due to wrong diagnosis at grassroots level. There is wrong counseling and patients are, de are referred very late. If, we, if I show you a data, 502 cardiac cats done last year. 50% of them were done to see um, reversibility of pulmonary pressure, and unfortunately, more than 50% were irre irreversibly hypertensive, and they had to uh, be taken out of the treatment protocol, only conservative management. Another thing is the financial burden. In our data, it shows more than 75% of the patient require um, financial support uh, to have any procedure done, which is also a big problem for us. So what is the way forward? We need a proper data to place our to see our problem. We need early diagnosis. We need early referral. We need trained manpower, and obviously, above all, we need health insurance to uh, ensure a good life for these patients with congenital heart disease. Thank you very much uh, from our National Heart Foundation congenital intervention team. Thank you for your kind patience hearing.